On Lake Manapuri, in what feels like the middle of nowhere, I first join Evan Brunton, a man who tracks and catches eels for a living. There are parts of this lake that plunge to more than a quarter of a mile deep, room enough for a monster to hide in, even today. So we've actually got over 1,500 feet in the middle. I mean, that's, that's way deeper than, than Loch Ness. 1,500 feet's nothing for an eel. Yeah. The other night we were tracking eels at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, and one eel was travelling right on the surface, and the other eel was travelling at um, 150 metres, which is 600 feet. An eel could quite happily live at the bottom of this lake. And do you think there are still big ones around? Yes, you... there is a few big ones from time to time. They just seem to turn up out of the blue. Evan calculates that some of the eels in this lake are over 80 years old. When you think about it, uh, some of these eels were 20 years old um, at the outbreak of the Second World War. Have you heard any stories of aggressive or dangerous eels in your time? Oh, yes. A couple of uh, people went missing in the hidden lakes of Tiana, supposedly taken by uh, monstrous eels. You've only got to see the strength in them when they bite. It'd be very, very hard for some people to um, actually get up again, especially if there was more than one of them. People can fall over and knock themselves out, can't they? At a secluded bay, we pull over to see if anything large has turned up in Evan's nets. Even here, the chances of finding a giant eel are slim. But the 16-pounder that Evan hauls out is still an impressive animal. So powerful. Yeah. You can imagine that at 30 pound. Yeah. Could drag someone away. So there's some eels up in the Waikato that have uh, been up to 100 pound. And they've been caught and reliably weighed? Yes, they have. Oh, gosh. Evan's accounts of monstrous 100-pound eels have got me itching to fish. But first, there's a niggling question at the back of my mind. I can well believe that a massive eel could seize someone and drag them under. But with teeth designed to grip rather than cut, I'm skeptical about whether it could actually dismember and devour a person. If Captain Cook's man-eater really is a huge longfin, then this animal must have some other way to rip you apart. To see how, I'm laying on a buffet. A hunter has provided me with a deer carcass, and I've brought along a high-tech box of tricks. Underwater cameras placed around the bait will give me separate views of the tail, throat and stomach. If any eels show up to feed, I'll be able to see how they deal with something that's too large to swallow whole. The eels I've seen got very powerful bodies and a very strong grip, but how one of these animals, even if it was the eight-foot size mentioned in Captain Cook's journal, how that could devour a person is still not immediately obvious. With my surveillance cameras switched on, I retreat to a makeshift control room. The stage is set. All I can do now is sit and wait. For nearly two hours, nothing shows up. Then, out of the blue, they appear like a pack of wolves. And I catch my first glimpse of how these animals could rip you to shreds. Yep, it's latching on. It's actually spinning. It's spinning around. These eels are feeding like crocodiles, gripping the victim firmly, then spinning violently to twist off chunks of flesh. If 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the River Monsters page.